This is Shiri Rubinoff, president of Cybersphere, a Futurum company, on the road with 65 Media here at RSA 2024. I'm joined by Jeremy Mbalabala, CISO at Hub International, and Kip Bell, CRO Cohesity. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please introduce yourselves to our audience? Tell them a little bit about what you both do for your organizations. And Jeremy, I'll start with you, please. Yeah, thanks, Shira. Uh, so Jeremy Mbalabala, CISO at Hub. Uh, we're a leading uh, private insurance broker based out of Chicago, um, and uh, you know my, my responsibility uh, encompasses just, you know, traditional security as you think about it, security operations, architecture, and engineering, uh, but also governance, risk, and compliance. Wonderful, thank you. And Kit, great to be here. So I am the CRO at Cohesity, means I'm responsible for everything to do with revenue generation uh, here at the company. Uh, I've been with the with Cohesity now just a little bit over a year and I've spent the last 30 years in tech sales. So really excited to be working now on the future of data protection and security and uh, to have a, a great guest here. Well, super important space and we have a lot to talk about today. So Jeremy, let's start with you. So Hub International is a leading global insurance brokerage and financial service firm. Can you tell us a little bit about the scope of operations and your role at the organization? Yeah, so uh, you know, Hub has prim primarily a uh, commercial insurance brokerage. We also have personal lines. Uh, but everything from you know, cyber assurance, DNO, ENO, employee benefits, um, you, you know, specialty, MJ, wholesale, we've got kind of everything. Um, we do a lot of acquisitions. Uh, so we do 60 to 70 acquisitions a year. So security program is, is very, very busy. Um, but we're primarily based in the U.S. and Canada, but we have some uh, international customers as well. Wonderful. And Kit, can you please share a little bit about Cohesity and its mission to secure and manage the world's data while helping organizations unlock data insights? Absolutely. So we think of data as sort of like an iceberg. What you use every day is just the top of the iceberg you can see. But it's what's underneath that really is, frankly, in many ways, more powerful, more valuable to organizations. So Cohesity was built 10 years ago from the ground up to be a next generation secondary data management security company. We have built this all on the concept of hyperconvergence, mm -hmm. such that we can uh, deliver the best performance, the best speed, speed to recover, speed to restore. And the the idea here is to really protect those crown jewels, the data that, again, that Jeremy's describing that runs this business. That's how Cohesity is, is structured. That's what we do. And now we're adding additional security layers and going into the future, AI. Well, super important. Data is king, and everybody knows that you really need to not just protect it, know where it sits, know where it lies, who has access to it across the board, super important. And Jeremy, the security landscape has changed remarkably in the last decade with 20, more than 20 plus ransomware attacks every second. Jeremy, as a CISO of a multi-billion dollar company, what are your top concerns when it comes to cybersecurity? And there's certainly many of them. We talked to many CISOs and the list is a mile long, but what are your main concerns that you think about? Yeah, the, the number one concern for me is, is data protection, right? So. Uh, being an insurance broker, we have what we like to call the trifecta sensitive data. So we've got PII, PHI, and obviously we deal with, with PCI. Um, and so keeping our customers' data safe is really important, you know, not just for us, but for our customers and the companies we do business with. Sure. Um, so that's, that's kind of forefront of mind, and everything that we do really focuses around how do we keep that data safe. Uh, the second piece is you know, around the shifts in the regulatory landscape. So things are changing. The world's changing very, very quickly. The threat landscape is changing. The risk landscape is changing, uh, which it needs to, right? The regulations need to change to keep up with uh, kind of the realities of the world that we're in. Uh, but how do we, you know, as security professionals, uh, ensure that we are able to, uh, you know, kind of rise to that level? And how do we measure? So it's getting more and more important for us to be able to not just bring controls and bring a, bring a healthy security posture to an organization, uh, but also represent that. So how do you measure that, communicate that to your other stakeholders, your customers, uh, regulators, et cetera? No, certainly. And it's also not just changing, it's expanding yeah. that much quicker than really anything we've seen in a very long time in our security areas. And Jeremy, how are you breaking down the barriers between traditional IT and SecOps? And what new challenges does that create bringing these two teams together? And certainly in the area of security and organization, bringing teams together is not that simple. Yeah, that's a great question, Shira. Yeah. So if you think about, uh, you go back in time and you talk about uh, technology organizations in general, there was this concept of ownership. And you had, you know, either security owned a product or a solution, or IT owned a product or solution, or the business, you know, maybe owned a solution. Uh, and that's kind of changed, right? In the in the world we're in today, it's it's necessary for us to 
you know, share responsibility. Uh, you know, processes are no longer owned by one team or one silo. Solutions, uh, you know, a, a product relationships, vendor relationships are no longer just kind of owned by one team. So it's very important for us to, you know, define what the organization needs, right? What is best for Hub? What is best for us? Uh, and work together to figure out, you know, how we can make that a reality. You know, you hit the nail on the head with one of the biggest problems organizations deal with. Because when you talk about ownership, it's a lot of, well, that's your responsibility. It's not something I deal with. And then companies have a lot of friction. So when you're able to bring those together and able to incentivize the different groups together in a way that wakes, makes them work in a, in a way that's fluid for the organization, it's better security, but also better within the organization. So that was exactly well said there. Yeah, people talk about the shared responsibility model as, as the term that was coined for the cloud, right? Yeah. And I think about that as, as you know, an internal technology organization, right? Shared responsibility you know, for organization and for our customers with our technology platforms. Certainly, certainly. And Kit, do the concerns Jeremy shared resonate with and what you're hearing from your customers? Because obviously we like to talk to our customers because the feedback is what makes us better. So I'd love to hear your thoughts around that. I love this concept of the trifecta of the the sensitive data. And I think, you know, we hear this a lot from customers all around the world, candidly. And it's whether you're talking about a, a nationwide restaurant chain all the way on up to the world's largest insurers and banks, everyone is concerned about making sure that you have a strategy to protect and secure the data. It could be employee data. It could be customer data. It it's really runs the gambit. And I think the, the challenge we've seen right now is that the, the, the bad actors, the cyber criminals are getting smarter, yes. right? And they know now it's not just to go after that primary data, they go after the backups as well. That's correct. And so as we think about how to continue to evolve the, the way that we protect and secure this data, first of all, we, we have to listen to our customers every day because they tend to be pushing us in ways that we might not have thought of on our own. And they're on the front line. They're on the front line, right. and they they see the attacks in many cases, you know, well before the the world knows about them generally. But I think equally, uh, I think we're at a place now where we have to innovate faster. And you talk about the the cloud delivered model, you know, it's pushing all of us, right? And we we want to make sure our customers have a competitive advantage because they can be confident that their data is protected and secured the right way. Yeah. And they can go take measured business risks in terms of trying new things with, again, with that confidence that, that their core data is protected. Well, that's super important. And I think a lot of organizations are starting to realize that the feedback is just as critical as the move, move forward to really listen so they can hone in on what needs to be tweaked or fixed or just moving together forward as a team is, is quite critical. And Jeremy, more and more ones are adopting multi-cloud strategies, both for cyber resiliency and for optimal performance. So how does Cohesity help uh, Hub reach its goals for multi-cloud strategy and ensure comprehensive data protection? How yeah. are they helping you? Yeah, so, so Hub is multi-cloud, right? I mean, I think in, in today's day and age, uh, you know, for, for a large enterprise, you, you need to be multi-cloud, right? You need that resilience and that flexibility. Um, and, you know, for us, Cohesity is, is kind of our core backup uh, solution for, you know, across those clouds and across on-prem. And, and I think about backup and you know data protection. Most of the solutions that are out there, uh, you know, legacy solutions, are focused on a different use case. Uh, you're, you're thinking about you know traditional disaster recovery. You're thinking about you know flood or tornado or fire, uh, and they're not really positioned well for kind of the reality of today, which the most likely case is going to be maybe a ransomware incident or some sort of cyber incident, right? And so for us, uh, you know, Cohesity made a lot of sense. Uh, as being part of our strategy uh, with this kind of approach to, you know, immutable data uh, in the cloud, in a cloud that's not part of our production cloud, it's managed by Cohesity. Yeah. And so to us, that was really the differentiator uh, of why we ended up going down uh, the path with Cohesity for, you know, to be, be part of our data backup uh, strategy. Well, that certainly makes sense with what you're dealing with in real world scenarios. And I think a lot of organizations think there's a one size fits all, but you really hold on the reasons why. And I think organizations need to take note of that and realize what the areas are that they need to fix and find the right solutions for the organizations that make sense. And can, art, artificial intelligence is automating and optimizing businesses' processes across the globe. As Cohesity recently shared exciting news about AI-powered enterprise search, which allows their customers to gain insights and value from their data. 
Can you share a little bit about this? And obviously gaining insights and value to the data, like data is king, what, you do everything with the data. So please share with us about what you're doing for your audience. Well, there, there are two pieces of this. Yeah. One is uh, similar to what Jeremy just said, the legacy approach to data backups was you'd make a copy, you'd put it away for a rainy day, you know, that flood, fire, earthquake, and it would just sit there and hopefully you never have to use it. Right. Our view has always been, if you have this very fresh current copy of your production data, you can do a lot more with it. Mm -hmm. So now as we start to think about, okay, you've got something, you've got an asset, you put it to work rather than just sit there and consume space power and cooling in your data center, yeah. We, we think that's a very powerful concept. But what we've been able to do is to then build on that with a modern uh, RAG solution, retrieval, augmented, and generated search, yeah. and be able to actually in, enable our customers, in particular with unstructured data, which I'm sure you have a lot of unstructured right. data, to be able to actually go ask questions, right, and do the things that you could pay analysts or data scientists to go and do, but they would take, you know, hours, days, weeks to do these things. Now you can do it with, uh, with a you know, quick UI, you know, text-based UI, ask the questions of your data, we say. Have a conversation with your data, actually. That's making your data work for you in the best case scenario because that gives more insight. It makes the data more valuable and also gives uh, the company more to work with and knowledge, which I think is quite critical. And Jeremy, how is Hub incorporating or looking to incorporate artificial intelligence? Yeah, I think there's a lot of buzz around AI right now. Um, I, I saw a panel yesterday, and I won't try to quote the exact stats, uh, that, that quoted a survey that talked about executives that were polled on adoption of AI or the desire to adopt AI. And it was somewhere in like the 50% ballpark. And then the same questions were asked to uh, you know, the, the technology owners, the, the implementers, and it was in like the 10% range, right? So there's this gap between businesses and the, from a leadership standpoint and having an appetite to consume and, uh, you know, AI and, and bring AI as part of the business. But the reality is use cases aren't really defined yet, uh, you know, universally. And there's still, there's still a gap to go, right? Sure. Uh, I think from a security perspective, uh, you know, AI has been something that's been around for, for a while and is baked into, you know, a lot of the products, a lot of the solutions um, that, you know, we as practitioners use. Um, and I think that, you know, with the, the you know, kind of the, the new wave on, you know, LLMs and uh, it, it really has, power to kind of stitch things together in a way that we hadn't had before, right? And so uh, I'm excited about the innovation that it can bring to kind of the security operations forefront uh, and being able to um, you know, allow security analysts to triage threats uh, and, re and, and make decisions, smarter decisions, much, much faster uh, with less subjectivity. So I think to me, that's, that's the most exciting area uh, for, for me personally uh, and where we're focused on from a security perspective. No, that's wonderful. And I know AI is certainly moving at warp speed, but it's still it's in, in, in its infancy. And we've yet to see where we're going with that, both from an attack vector and also from a defense mechanism. So that's certainly very important. And Jeremy, what are your long-term goals for building out Hub International's BCDR strategy? And how do you see Cohesity assisting with this in the future as you move forward within your organization? Yeah, so to me, it's, it's, it's you know, I talked a little bit about kind of the shared responsibility internally. Uh, we talked about, you know, how the threats have changed and you know, data, data protection isn't just about kind of the physical natural, natural disasters anymore. So to me, it's continuing to invest in our incident response capabilities, uh, our integrated planning with our technology and business partners. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll really have kind of end-to-end -end thinking and planning around data protection. Uh, and you know, Cohesity is a core capability for us, but we want to continue to mature our capabilities, uh, continue to invest and develop uh, kind of that integrated end-to-end -end, uh, you know, thinking around data protection. Well, that's wonderful. It seems like this partnership is a one plus one equals three. And I, I always like to ask my guests to give our audience just maybe a little bit of a cybersecurity tip, something you personally think that people should really think about when you think about being secure, whether being within your organization or personally, something to be secure about in cybersecurity. And Kit, I'll start with you. Sure. I, I would actually build on something that Jeremy said a moment ago, which is physical diversity. Mm -hmm. If you have all of your assets in one place, no matter what, there could be an earthquake, a fiber cut, a fire, whatever it happens to be, mm -hmm. make sure you have the physical diversity in your cybersecurity strategy to make sure that not only can you protect yourself, but you can recover quickly if you need to. Very smart and very true. And Jeremy, how about yourself? Yeah, to me, it's, it's sticking outside the box, right? Um, 
you know, this, this, this industry is, is, uh, you know, fairly young compared to, to other industries. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of innovation and a lot of new things that uh, you know, are being developed. And just because we did something this, you know, the same way we did it 10, 15 years ago, uh, doesn't mean that's how we have to do it going forward. So we need to kind of think outside the box and be willing to, uh, you know, take different approaches and take, take some risks in, in solving some of these challenges. Thank you very much. And thank you, Jeremy. And thank you, Kit, for joining us here today. This is Shira Rubinoff, the 6-5 Media. Thank you all for joining us.